Have you ever felt the fear and uncertainty that comes with kidney disease? You're not alone. But today, I'm going to share something that will change everything you thought you knew about this condition. Imagine a world where no kidney patient ever has to face the prospect of losing a kidney again. Sounds incredible, right? Well, it's not just a dream. Recent scientific breakthroughs have brought us to the brink of a revolution in kidney health. We're talking about a groundbreaking study involving over 400 participants, spanning an incredible eight years, unveiling secrets that we never knew. And the most exciting part? I'm going to reveal how even those in the advanced stages of kidney disease, yes, stages 4 and 5, can reclaim their health. You're about to discover the five transformative steps that are empowering kidney patients to take control and rewrite their stories. So, are you ready to join this journey towards a brighter, healthier future? Let's embark on this life-changing path together, starting right now. Step 1. Mastering Oxalates Let's delve into the world of oxalates and their impact on kidney health. Picture oxalates as these tiny, natural compounds that are found in a variety of plant-based foods. While they're a part of many healthy diets, they can be a bit tricky for our kidneys. When we consume foods high in oxalates, like spinach, rhubarb, beets, and certain nuts and seeds, these oxalates can team up with calcium in the urine to form crystals. These are the building blocks of what many know as kidney stones. It's a bit like a party getting out of hand in your kidneys, and nobody wants that. But here's where the magic of balance and smart choices comes in. You see, not all oxalates need to end up causing trouble. Some foods, particularly those rich in calcium, play a crucial role here. A study published in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology in 2014 found that dietary calcium binds with oxalates in the intestines. This partnership is important because it means oxalates are less likely to travel to the kidneys and form stones. Foods like low-fat yogurt, milk, and cheese are great allies in this journey. Then there's fiber, another superhero in our story. High-fiber foods, such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, have a knack for binding with oxalates in the gut. This binding action was highlighted in a 2013 study in the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology. By doing so, fiber helps prevent oxalates from being absorbed into the bloodstream, thereby reducing the risk of them reaching the kidneys and forming stones. So, what's the takeaway? While it's smart to be mindful of high oxalate foods, it's all about creating a balanced diet. Swapping out some high oxalate veggies for lower oxalate options like cauliflower, cucumbers, and peas can be a great start. And remember, boiling vegetables can also help reduce their oxalate content, a simple yet effective trick. And now, if you've been touched by the sincerity of our content, why not subscribe to our channel and spread the word to your friends and those bravely battling kidney conditions. Click on the bell icon to stay always updated. Moving on to step 2. Embracing fiber to fight uremic toxins. Gather round, because this is a real game changer for your kidneys. Ever heard of uremic toxins? These are the unwanted guests in our bloodstream, especially when our kidneys are playing catch-up and filtering them out. They're born from protein breakdown, amino acid metabolism, and other bodily processes. When your kidneys aren't in top shape, these toxins, like creatinine and urea, can start to pile up. Here's where the magic of fiber, particularly soluble fiber, comes into play. Imagine it as a friendly sponge in your gut, mixing with water to form this gentle, gel-like buddy. This gel is pretty good at one thing, grabbing onto waste products, including those sneaky uremic toxins, 
and stopping them from gate crashing into your bloodstream. Let's talk about a superstar in the soluble fiber world, Acacia Fiber. This humble hero comes from the sap of the Acacia Senegal tree. It's like the MVP of soluble fibers, boasting about 85-95% to 95 of its weight in this kidney-loving nutrient. And here's something that might surprise you. Some studies have shown that people with serious kidney issues have managed to keep dialysis at bay for up to eight years with the help of acacia fiber. That's pretty incredible, right? So, by welcoming acacia fiber and other soluble fibers into your diet, you're essentially setting up a friendly barrier. This barrier keeps the bad stuff, like uremic toxins, from getting too cozy in your bloodstream, which is a big win if you're navigating kidney disease. Let's keep looking after our kidneys together, one step at a time. Moving on to step 3, it's all about increasing your vitamin D intake. Now, you might be thinking, how much difference can one vitamin make? Well, it turns out quite a lot. Research indicates that a significant 80% of individuals with kidney issues are in need of more vitamin D. This isn't just a random statistic, a lack of vitamin D has been closely associated with the onset of kidney disease, highlighting its crucial role. Here's the thing about vitamin D, it's a bit of a multitasker. It plays a pivotal role in regulating blood pressure, maintaining bone health, and can even contribute to lowering creatinine levels. And there's another condition called proteinuria, where too much protein ends up in the urine, often signaling kidney damage. Vitamin D steps in here too, shown to help prevent this condition, thereby offering an extra layer of protection for your kidneys. To check your vitamin D levels, there's a test known as the 25-hydroxyvitamin D test. If the results show less than 30 nanograms per milliliter, it's an indicator that your vitamin D levels could use a boost. The good news is, it's quite straightforward to increase your intake. Taking about 2,000 international units of vitamin D daily, along with some vitamin K2 and magnesium, can be beneficial. And for those with more serious kidney issues, there are specific types of vitamin D supplements that doctors can prescribe. Let's explore step 4. Identifying and addressing the root cause. When it comes to protecting your kidneys, it's crucial to tackle the underlying issues head-on. Here's a surprising fact. Nearly half of the individuals with kidney problems also struggle with diabetes. Yes. Diabetes is a leading cause of kidney disease. Many people with type 2 diabetes believe that if they've had the condition for over 6 years, there's no way to reverse it. However, recent studies have brought some good news. They reveal that even if you've been living with type 2 diabetes for as long as 11 years, there's still a chance to turn things around. Isn't that remarkable? So, what's a natural approach to combat diabetes? It starts with your diet. Recent research has shown that simply changing what you eat can put diabetes into reverse. A natural remedy that's gaining attention in the fight against type 2 diabetes is apple cider vinegar, ACV. Integrating ACV into your routine is simple. Just mix 1 to 2 tablespoons of unfiltered ACV in a glass of water and drink it before meals, 2 to 3 times a day. This concoction can help lower blood sugar levels and improve insulin sensitivity. But that's not all. ACV might also aid in weight loss. During a study, individuals who consumed about 15 milliliters of ACV with their lunch and dinner experienced almost double the weight loss compared to others. Since obesity is a major risk factor for diabetes and heart disease, incorporating 1 to 2 tablespoons of ACV daily can be a beneficial step towards preventing various health issues, including kidney disease. Let's move on to step 5. 
making simple dietary adjustments. Alongside the advice I've shared in the first four steps, a few straightforward tweaks to your diet can significantly aid in your recovery from kidney disease. Firstly, it's important to cut down on sodium salts to manage blood pressure and fluid retention. This means steering clear of processed and packaged foods, notorious for their high sodium content. Depending on your kidney disease stage, you might also need to watch your protein intake. Consuming high amounts of protein can burden the kidneys, particularly if you're already dealing with kidney stones or chronic kidney disease. It's a good idea to consult a healthcare professional to determine a safe level of protein consumption for you. Potassium is generally beneficial for people with healthy kidneys and even those in the early stages of kidney disease. However, if you're in an advanced stage, your kidneys might struggle to regulate potassium levels. In such cases, limiting high potassium foods like bananas, oranges, tomatoes, and potatoes becomes essential. Refined carbs, such as white bread, white rice, and pasta, should be avoided. Instead, opt for complex carbohydrates like whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Among these, certain fruits stand out for their kidney-friendly properties. These include apples, berries, grapes, pineapple, watermelon. These are usually high in fiber, help manage blood sugar levels, and provide energy without overworking your kidneys. Limiting alcohol consumption is also crucial, as excessive alcohol can impair kidney function and potentially interact with medications. For those with diabetes, controlling blood sugar levels is vital for kidney health. Work closely with your healthcare team to manage your diabetes effectively. Lastly, staying hydrated is key. Water aids your kidneys in eliminating waste and toxins efficiently. However, if you're already dealing with kidney issues, consult with your healthcare expert about the right amount of water intake for your condition. As we wrap up our journey through these five essential steps for kidney health, I want to leave you with a thought. How will you implement these steps in your life? Maybe you'll start by tweaking your diet or exploring the wonders of apple cider vinegar. Remember, every small change can make a big difference for your kidneys. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. Which step are you most excited to try? Do you have any kidney-friendly tips of your own? Share your stories in the comments below. Your insights could be the beacon of hope for someone on a similar path. Thank you for joining me, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more healthful insights. Until next time, take care of your kidneys, and they'll take care of you.